A powerful new rocket is preparing for its first flight, and it could significantly impact the space industry. Morgan Brennan is here to explain, and this is on Monday. This is on Monday at 2.18 a.m. Eastern, and I will Oof. be down on the Florida Space Coast. Thank you very much for this. This is a major moment. Wow. This is a decade and billions of dollars in the making. The maiden flight of United Launch Alliance's powerful Vulcan Centaur rocket. As I mentioned, the liftoff is scheduled for early Monday morning. The mission launch, launching the startup Astrobotics NASA contracted lander, which is filled with government and commercial payloads to the moon in what would become, if all goes according to plan, over the next couple of weeks, the first time ever a privately owned spacecraft has landed on the lunar surface. Now, Vulcan is ULA's new heavy lift rocket. It's going to replace the legacy vehicles powered by Russian engines. Vulcan's engines are built by Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin. It is a crucial moment for the Boeing Lockheed Martin joint venture. This is the first original rocket that's actually been developed by ULA. Customers include the US government and Amazon. And it comes as the company field's perspective takeover offers. It also comes as the launch landscape has dramatically shifted in recent years. SpaceX launched 96 successful missions last year, which was, by the way, an industry record. ULA, as it transitions to Vulcan, just three. More competition is coming, including SpaceX, SpaceX's Starship that's under development. Blue Origin's New Glenn, which is under development, has yet to fly. NASA's SLS, which is used primarily and exclusively for Artemis moon missions. And a number of less powerful rockets from Rocket Lab, Relativity Space, and others. The question, is there room for everyone? That remains to be seen, but as ULA's CEO, Tori Bruno, and others have repeatedly told me, with thousands of satellites and spacecraft needing to be launched over just the next few years, a capacity crunch could be coming. We may have more need than we have rocket supply to get everything to space. What is this uh, vessel going to carry to the moon? It's not coming back, is it, or is it? No, it's not coming. Well, So what's it going to leave there? So the the astrobotic yeah, lunar lander it? yeah um so it's it's got uh seven different countries it's got payloads for seven different countries it's going to be doing scientific it's got research some amazon boxes on but it, it also I mean. has it also has some commercial payloads including and this has been more controversial for a variety of reasons but the cremains of some star trek luminaries on board it's not going to attempt to land on the moon until oh. later in february to time it with the sunrise on the moon, which is a very different cycle than the one we see on a daily basis here on planet Earth. It will have exactly 10 days to carry out all of these missions, collect all of the data, beam it back to Earth, and then everything basically shuts down when the sun sets again. <clears throat> so it's going to orbit the moon for a few days? It's going to like orbit the moon for a few weeks. Oh, weeks, okay. And then it's going to attempt this landing. And by the way, it's not the only commercial lunar lander that is attempting to do this. We actually have a little bit of a competition there, too. Intuitive Machines, which is publicly traded, though very small cap at this point, is also preparing to launch its own lunar lander. Remains to be seen which one is going to land first if, in fact, both of them land and land successfully. Is NASA still working on anything on this front, or is it all private sector? So this is all, so it is, it is public-private partnerships Got it. with NASA under a NASA program that basically prepares the lunar surface for humans' return later this decade. Wow. Interesting. All right. Thanks, I'm Morgan. not going to... It's happening. Enjoy, to the moon. Enjoy Monday at 2.18. <laughs> I'll be thinking of you.